What's going on guys, it's Whisk here, one half of the BOP Gaming, and here is the top five gaming news this week. Number one, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet got glitches. Yes, and Nintendo had to apologize for it. Nintendo apologizes for Pokemon performance problems, promises, improvements. Feels like an episode of, you know, Cyberpunk 2077, you know what I mean? Anywho, when it came out, a lot of people were talking about all these types of technical failures. Courtesy of Ars Technikia, there was bugs, there was uh, technical blurry, poorly textured things, and you could run twice as fast connecting the two. If you connect two controls, you can run twice as fast. That's that's damn near glitches, like from end game, like on some Modern Warfare ish. But anywho, animation clippings, it was just it was just a mess. Something that an average consumer won't see in a Pokemon game. When you get a Pokemon game, it's totally finished. Now, this Pokemon Scarlet Violet is in the realms of all other games. 50% complete, half-baked. Number two, PlayStation 5 launches tournaments. On every PlayStation console, now you have the opportunity to dive into some tournaments. It starts with Guilty Gear, Strive, NBA 2K23, and FIFA 23, of course, with the World Cup and all that jazz. Um, it's all new, discoverable tournaments, all new UI, real-time match updates right on the home screen of the PlayStation. And they actually are announcing a win-a-thon between December 1st and January 31st. You could take part in the PlayStation tournaments, win-a-thon on both PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 consoles, which is pretty cool. And you'll get you into, uh, you know, raffles and prizes like the PlayStation consoles, of course. A new DualSense Edge wireless controllers and the like. So it's pretty cool and gives you gives more drive for, you know, players like I and everybody else to just... Dive into a little bit more and win some, win, win some prizes. Coming in at number three, Nintendo shuts down Smash World Tour organizers. Wow. Grimy, but could we get mad? At the end of the day, an organization, Smash World Tour, has been rocking for many years, hosting tournaments and the like with Super Smash Bros. Melee and all that. But guess what? They didn't have the official license, and that's what happens. Uh, courtesy of Kotaku, the organizers of the Smash World Tour have today announced that they are being shut down after Nintendo, without any warning, told them they could no longer operate. The long list of things as to back and forth of meetings and the like, but at the end of the day, they were rocking it, they were rocking it. Nintendo didn't have any sort of problem until they partnered with a company named Panda to offer official tournaments while using Super Smash Bros. Melee and any other Super Smash Brothers game out there hence why they just randomly without notice told smash war tour yeah you, yeah guys you're done because they didn't even have the license in the first place dang guess who gets hurt all players number four modern warfare 2 sells a skin that makes you completely black wow really a lot of people are taking advantage of this of course Modern Warfare 2 is obviously going to be gun-ho with all Warzone and all multiplayers and the like. And then those are camping with skins that are completely black in the corner. You barely can see. They can can go on the floor. Pap, 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 and they're dead. Well, you know what? Now they've released one. It is an actual Call of Duty League pack that people are just flocking over. Um, and it makes you completely black. Like, literally, like, a shimmer of dark gray is, like, the only color. Hell, I might get it. But, anywho, they're saying it's unfair. They're going to make minor adjustments. Maybe as of this, there hasn't been any form of changes. But this is not the first time because the operator, Rose, had a skin that was really, 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 really dark as well. But who knows? They might have a patch patched up, but it looks cool, though. And coming in at number five, Activision Blizzard loses second union vote. The Gamers Workers Alliance Albany is now the second group inside Activision to form a union. Courtesy of Kotaku, the quote from Amanda Deep says in the press release, it took an unbelievable amount of work and perseverance to move this fight forward. With this victory, we're advocating for ourselves and each other because we care deeply about our work and the games we make. Organizing has empowered all of us to fight hard for the dignity and respect every worker deserves on the job more power to you lady let's keep it moving and let's keep it pushing and that concludes our top five this week make sure you like subscribe and comment and if you object if you love it like it comment we want to hear your thoughts this is whisk here one half of the bop gaming peace